up, you beautiful souls. Again, it's a privilege that I get to be with all of you folks on a sunny, cold November morning. We have a, a few announcements for you. Uh, we're excited to invite all of you to our upcoming Life Group Fellowship Gathering at Oldenburg Brewing on Sunday, November 24th, starting at 4 p.m. Uh, Life Group is, uh, was started uh, maybe a year ago or so, about, and it's about getting to know one another, doing something outside of church, and having those connecting moments where we can connect with one another uh, in a different way than sitting in the sanctuary. So all are welcome. Mark your calendars, please. This past week, H2H and KOK packed 136 shoe boxes for Operation Christmas Child. So thank you, thank you, thank you. It is a uh, powerful activity uh, where we get to do some good. So thank you for allowing that to happen and all the volunteers that participated. And on December 1st, we are going to decorate for Christmas after church. So if you are feeling festive and are crafty and decorate or maybe tall, <laughs> uh, you're invited. Again, that's December 1st. After church, we'll decorate uh, for the upcoming season. Please pay attention to the rest of the announcements and let us begin with a word of prayer. Gracious God, we take a moment to just breathe and say thank you. Thank you for the gift of a new day. Thank you for the gift of the person sitting next to us. Thank you for the gift of you and make us aware of your presence, not only in this time and space, but also with and within us. You are good and we are grateful. In Jesus' name, everyone said, Amen. please stand as you are able and join us in our opening hymn.
Thank you, choir. <clears throat> How's my volume today? My, can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. All right. We will continue with our soul business, as we like to call it, through our brief order of confession and forgiveness. And again, as a reminder to all of us, myself included, to not just go through motions, but be reminded that this is an invitation from God to be honest with ourselves, with our neighbors, and with our God. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another in a moment of silence. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. And hear the good news. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved through faith. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in our hearts through faith. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. I invite you, as you are able, to stand up and share that peace with those around you. But again, be careful. Don't share any germs. You may be seated and we'll continue with our Kyrie and hymn of praise.
Please join me in our prayer of the day. Almighty God, your sovereign purpose brings salvation to birth. Give us faith to be steadfast amid the tumults of this world, trusting that your kingdom comes and your will is done through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. I invite Danielle and the little nuggets forward for our children's message. Good morning. Come on up. I'm going to sit this way today because I brought a bag and what I have in it, and I'm realizing my bag isn't concealing it very well, but it's for everybody here, not just the kids. So should we look? It is glowing. Let's see what's in my bag. What did Miss Danielle bring? Christmas lights. And I had to work really hard to get these out yesterday. They were in the very last box in our storage room, so I think we should decorate for Christmas today. Yeah? Yeah. So I brought Christmas lights. Now, where do you see Christmas lights? On a Christmas tree. On a Christmas tree. On a tractor. Tractor, that would be amazing. I bet you do it. Maybe at Grandpa's? Yeah. A house. A house. Jack, were you going to say a house? Yeah. All right, so we see Christmas lights in lots of places at Christmas time. Now, boys and girls, whose birthday do we celebrate at Christmas? Go ahead and shout it out. Jesus. Jesus' birthday is at Christmas. Now, our gospel today says something pretty awesome about Jesus. It says that Jesus was the light that shows the way for all mankind. And mankind, that means all people. It means all of us sitting up here. It means all those big people out there. It means everyone in the whole world which is pretty important, all mankind, all people. So, Jesus was born on Christmas Day. Did he stay a baby? No, he grew up. And when he lived on earth, he showed people how to live and how to treat other people, right? Yes. Now, are these lights on? Are they shining? Yeah, we can see them. What if it was nighttime? And we were in here. Yeah. It would be 
would be really light in here. Would we see them even brighter? Yeah, that's what's pretty cool about Christmas lights is we see them even better in the darkness. Isn't that interesting? Our gospel lesson today also says that the light shines in the darkness and the darkness does not overcome it. That means, boys and girls, when life might feel a little sad or hard, that's okay because Jesus' light shines even in those dark times. Pretty cool, huh? So this Christmas, when you see Christmas lights on tractors or on houses or on your Christmas tree, I want you to remember that Jesus was born, and when he lived, he was the light that showed us the way. All right, let's pray. Repeat after me. Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus thank, you for today. thank you for today. Thank you that you are the light that shows us the way, and that your light, and that your light shines in the darkness. And nothing can overcome that. And nothing can overcome that. We love you. We love you. In your name we pray. And all God's children said, The lesson today comes from the 16th chapter of Psalms. Keep me safe, my God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, you are my Lord. Apart from you, I have no good thing. I say of the holy people who are in the land, they are the noble ones in whom is all my delight. Those who run after other gods will suffer more and more. I will not pour out libations of blood to such gods or take up their names on my lips. Lord, you alone are my portion and my cup. You make my lot secure. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Surely I have a delightful inheritance. I will praise the Lord who counsels me. Even at night my heart instructs me. I will keep my eyes always on the Lord. With him at my right hand, I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will rest secure because you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead, nor will you let your faithful ones see decay. You make known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence, with eternal pleasures at your right hand. Here ends the lesson. Please stand for our gospel acclamation.
The Gospel of St. John, chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him all things were made. Without Him nothing was made that has been made. In Him was life, and that life was the light of all humankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Gospel of our Lord. You may be seated. <clears throat> well, thanks again uh, for showing up. Thank you for providing me the privilege to proclaim the good news. Anybody seen Flat Jesus yet today? Oh, okay. Keep your eyes peeled. You know, we had a pretty, uh, pretty busy week here at this uh, beautiful community of faith, and I just uh, want to acknowledge our welcome table and a special thanks to all those who helped, and specifically to Pastor Diane, Angie, S Sarah, Shar, Eric, Leah, Danielle, and many, many others. Uh, it was a beautiful evening, and uh, bread was broken, fellowship happened, the good news was proclaimed, worship happened, it was... Uh, just absolutely fantastic. So from deep within me, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Can I get an amen? amen? All right. Last week, we discussed the poor widow who gave two cents, and yet Jesus proclaimed that she gave more than anyone else. Again, teaching us about value, where so often we value the stuff God values you and I. And God warns us about the stuff saying the stuff can distract you, distract us to the point where we don't see the value in the person if they don't have the stuff. Not to mention, it was a pretty harsh warning to me. If you recall, I wore my fancy robe. Does anybody remember the fancy robe? A very harsh warning to the religious folks that weaponize faith and religion and use it to their own advantage. They weaponize it, and all in that, they destroy lives. Be careful to me, and uh, be careful to all of us. But on to our text for today, but uh, we best pray. Sweet Jesus, uh, thank you. Thank you for the privilege of being one of yours all the while we get to call you ours. Help us to take hold of that. Help us to hear your word, to listen to your word, to ingest your word. Help us to live your word. In Jesus' name, amen. So John chapter 1, the first uh, five verses, is really a mirror of Genesis chapter 1. And by the way, I, I moved away from our typical liturgical text for today because I was reading this earlier this week and it really got me. I really wrestled with it. Maybe it was because I, uh, you know, was a bit of a rascal this week or something, but the Spirit was moving. And I've heard this text hundreds, maybe even thousands of times, and something new popped up this week. And that's part of the mystery and the divine nature of our texts. But uh, as you heard in the first verse, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. Just a bit of a circle. But if we compare that to Genesis chapter 1, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty and darkness was over the surface of the deep and the Spirit of God is hovering over the waters. Verse 4 from John says this, In him was life and that life was the light of all humankind. That light shines in the darkness. And darkness has not overcome it. In Genesis 3, and God said, let there be light, and there was light. God saw that the light was good and separated the light from the darkness. So the text that we read today from John reminds us that Jesus is fully God. Before the beginning, Jesus was fully present and active in the creation event. And again, John's goal is to get the reader to see the divinity of Jesus and come to faith. Now, we could go down a very 
lengthy number of some rabbit warrens, if you will, with this text. Uh, we could discuss the mystery of the Trinity. We could discuss the Paschal mystery. We could discuss soteriology, eschatology, systematic theology, but that wouldn't do me or you much good. Plus, I think I just made up a few words. <laughs> but we religious folks have a tendency to do that from time to time. But here's what struck me this week. In him was life, and that life was the light of all humankind. One word, life. In him, Jesus, is life. That Jesus' life is the light of all humankind. Again, multiple layers of truth being proclaimed to us. But again, what is this life about? We often speak about the birth of Jesus, do we not? And when do we celebrate that? Yay, Christmas, right? It's fantastic. We speak about the death of Christ. Now, this is a bit of a trick question. When do we commemorate the death of Jesus? Good Friday. Okay, good job, everybody. Good job. And how about the resurrection of Christ? When do we celebrate that? Okay, great job. You all pass confirmation. What about the life of Christ? When do we celebrate the life of Christ? Not that we're doing anything wrong, but I just, sometimes we get so focused on these key events, we forget about the longest event of Christ, that being the life of Christ. And according to this verse, what does the life of Christ bring? Light. Okay. So let's take a look at Jesus' life. And this should take about... 30 years. But what are some of the characteristics of Christ's life that we can apply to our lives? First, it has to be humility. Christ, God, the divine nature, gave up God's power. Right? Christ gave up his divine placement and authority and all those things and put on skin and came to us. And where was he born? A stable, right? He's born in a barn, born in a food trough. Does that sound real power and majestic, yes, no, full or something, right? No, very humble, right? This was a poor, common fella from a nowhere place to a no-name family. Doesn't sound like royalty as we understand royalty. The humility of Christ is duly noted and duly proclaimed, proclaimed. Second, Christ was obnoxiously compassionate. Just a few weeks ago, we read about how Jesus was deeply moved, right? In fact, Jesus wept when his buddy Lazarus had passed away. Jesus had empathy, where, where Jesus feels the pain of the other, right? Jesus saw the need, heard the need, felt the need of the other, and responded. So we have one, humility, two, compassion or empathy. Three, Jesus was present. Jesus showed up. One of my favorite texts, and I probably say that about just about all texts, but one of my favorite texts is this Emmaus text. And it's post-resurrection of Jesus, post-crucifixion of Jesus, and these two disciples are walking to this place, village, town called Emmaus. And they are heartbroken. They are scared. They are freaked out, right? Because they had thought that Jesus was going to be some other kind of Savior. And unbeknownst to them, Jesus comes and walks with them. I don't know how, right? I don't know how they didn't recognize that it was Jesus, but they did it. And Jesus just walked with them and listened to their fears and listened to their pain and listened to their confusion and listened to, now, wow, well, we thought Jesus would have done this or would have done that or would have done this. And Jesus didn't say, hey, 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 you got it all wrong. You're in trouble now. You're not listening, right? You're not living right. You're not doing right. Jesus just listened. And then what did he do? He sat down and broke bread with them. Right? He was so fully present. And then the divine moment happened. So Jesus was humble, obnoxiously humble. Jesus is compassionate, obnoxiously compassionate. Jesus is obnoxiously present. 
forth. Even though Jesus is the judge, according to our Apostles' Creed, he will come again to you, right? He will come again to you. Okay, we lost you there for a second. <laughs> and even though he is the eternal judge, he's not judging people at this moment. Right? Jesus accepts all people. And if we would understand what a first century AD person was like, or a foreigner was like, or a non-Jew was like, or a Gentile was like, and to experience how Jesus invited them, how Jesus welcomed them, it didn't matter who they were, how they were, what they were, none of that mattered to Jesus. They were all welcome at the table. Now, Jesus didn't leave them in that state, right? Jesus drew them into something better. We could say from death to life. Jesus is non-judgmental. Five, Jesus is willing. Jesus is willing to get in the mud with us. Jesus was willing to do the work. Jesus was willing to do the stuff, the hard stuff, the not fun stuff. The stuff that cost him something. In fact, the stuff that cost him everything. That's the stuff that brings the light to all humankind. That's the stuff. Humility, compassion, present, non-judgmental, and a willingness to do the stuff. Now, I want you to think for a moment who in your life lights up your world? Who in your life, when they walk into your house room, when they, you see them somewhere, who in your life brings that smile to your face, lights up your world? And why is that? Why do they light up your world? Then think, whose world do you light up? Like practically thinking, like not just reading this text and be like, oh yeah, that's nice. Practically thinking, who lights up your world and whose world do you light up and why? Why does that happen? And then back off to the 30,000 foot view and think about what creation would look like if we lived like that, if we lived in a Christ-like way, if we lived with humility, not thinking we're better than anyone else, if we lived with compassion and empathy, right, where we saw and felt the need of the other, if we lived where we were fully present with the person sitting next to us, not about our own agenda or what this or what that or why or whatever, if we lived with this non-judgmental where we are invitational, where we are hospitable, if we lived when we were willing to act on the behalf of the other, even if it came at a cost to us. My hunch is that if I lived like that, if we all lived like that a little bit more, our world would be a little bit brighter. There would be more light and there'd be more life. You see, the practicality of this hit me this week, right? It's, it, we get so caught up in right theology and saying the right thing and looking the right way and having the right stuff. And even in the world of Christianity, right, we, uh, there's so much infighting, right? What about this? What about the life of Christ that brings light to the world? What if we've lived like that? What if we lit up our home? What if we lit up our community of faith? What if we lit up our expanded community? What if we lit up our world? And it's not easy. I mean, sometimes it is. And it's not fun, but sometimes it is. But in the grand scheme, it will always be good. Can I get an amen? Let us pray. Gracious God, uh, help me, 
Help me to live like that. To see past my own muck. Help this community to shine so brightly, not that we have the brightest Christmas tree or what have you. I mean, that's nice too, but help us to live in a way that your light shines through me and us and this beautiful community so that it is you that is glorified, so that it is you that is pointed at, so that it is you and your life that brings light. In Jesus' name, amen. We'll continue with our congregational prayers. The response today is receive our prayer. Rooted in God's abundant love for the world, let us pray for our neighbors, the church, and all of creation. O oh God, in washing the water, you set us free from the power of sin and death. Unite all the baptized in the covenant you have made with us as we strive for your justice and peace in all the earth. Merciful God, receive our prayer. By your merciful might, you sustain all creation. Stir us from complacency with the harm we inflict on the earth and urge us to adopt sustainable ways of life that protect and restore our planet. Merciful God, with a selfless power, you protect all who take refuge in you. As nations rise against nations, defend all who are displaced or affected by war or violence. Empower all people and nations to pursue peace. Merciful God, in your presence you give fullness of joy. Care for all for whom joy feels distant. Be present with persons experiencing depression, anxiety, addiction, or any mental illness, especially Claire, Tammy, Mary, Mark, David, Adele, Diane, and those we silently lift up to you now. Bring them healing and wholeness. Merciful God, through the years you have gathered your church and this community for worship, fellowship, formation, and service. Enable us to look beyond the walls of our building to perceive where you are calling us forward. Merciful God, with thanksgiving we remember saints and angels who delight in your everlasting presence. As their lives inspire ours, provoke us always to love, holding fast to the confession of your hope. Merciful God, we offer our prayers to you, gracious God, trusting in your boundless love for all that you have made through Jesus Christ, our Savior, and all God's people say, amen. We will continue with our offering, but I forgot something this morning. Uh, so, Shara, you don't need to, need to pray. I'm going to invite Brad up. He was going to talk about our stewardship drive at the announcements, and I blanked it out. I apologize. So, Brad, come on up. Ushers, come forward, and we'll receive our offering and hear from Brad. Do we have the handheld? Do you? I, oh, you're going up there. Okay, we got it. Uh, good morning. I uh, was hoping to have this done before Pastor Matt said the sermon because uh, you're going to hear a few things again. And I kind of got outgunned during the sermon today, so bear with me. Uh, my name is Brad Warmka. I am a trustee here. I'm a committee chair of the trustees, and I've been asked to say some words about hope matters. I said, well, that's easy. I hope the Packers win and the Vikings lose, and we got it done. Uh, obviously I was wrong as a frying pan came flying at me, but uh, I was asked to talk about time, talent, and treasures. 
Myself and my family, we joined Hope about five years ago. We've been looking for a church for a while, and we tried a few churches out, and it kind of always felt like fresh meat. Walk in, and they're on you quicker than anything, asking to join committees and do this, do that, and just wasn't a good fit. So we were kind of kicking around for a while. And then when we moved closer to Jordan, we met two amazing people. We get to call them neighbors, and we get to call them friends. It was Tom and Karen Francis. And they said, why don't you try our church out? We're like, okay. So we came in, and it was a natural fit. There was just being greeted and welcomed where we were allowed to do what we wanted to do, be able to fit in the way we wanted to and not feel overwhelmed. Then a short time after we we joined, Molly was approached to uh, ask to help teach KOK. And she told me, I said, hey, that's good for you. (laughs) And she said, "Uh, you're going to help me. And I, I looked her dead in the eyes and I said, you bet. Uh, so we taught KOK for a couple years until our daughter Josie aged out, and then Molly was approached again to ask if I would be a trustee. Kind of noticing a trend here. <laughs> we asked Molly, and she can't ever say no. Uh, so I said, like, sure, I'll do be a trustee. What does a trustee do? I have, didn't really know, and it was plain to me, well, if they fix things. I'm like, well, I can fix things. I fix a lot of things. Growing up on a farm, fixed lots of stuff. Even my son even commented one time, he knew what he was going to put on my tombstone. He couldn't fix this. <laughs> so, um, being, on the, being a trustees, it allowed us to serve. And that's a core, power, core thing for our family, is service to others. S- helping out where needed, being able to you know, when asked, we need chairs moved, tables moved, whatever, we're there to help. Um, that was, inst- like I said, it was instilled in me as a young child growing up on a farm in southern Minnesota that we helped the neighbors, helped everybody. And just this past year, down on the farm, our neighbor's shed caught on fire, lost all of his farm equipment. And my dad was over there talking to him, and he's like, I don't know how I'm going to get my harvest out. And it was, don't worry give us a call. We'll come over with our machinery. We will get your harvest out. And that's what happened this fall. We went, it showed up, took the crop out, everything was okay. And that means a lot to me, is helping the neighbors, helping the community. And it's just not me being on the trustees as well. Molly, my wife, has um, been on several committees. She's been on the transition team, the call team parking lot committee. And she's also on the church council. She's also direct market, marketing director here. And so what does this all mean that I'm babbling about? Is What am I asking? Is I'm asking you to take a deeper look inside to first share your treasure. You know, Pastor Matt stole it from me today, but in the gospel last week, the woman that gave two coins she gave the most. She gave what she could. And that's all we're asking is give what you can. Nobody's going to judge you. Oh, sorry, I'm losing my spot here. Uh, talents. <clears throat> I ask it to be open to sharing what God's gifts he has given you. It doesn't have to be the biggest thing. It doesn't have to be in the choir. It doesn't have to be playing in the band. I wish I could do that. You don't want me singing. I can't carry a tune. Um, <laughs> But it could be a simple thing as maybe putting an arm around somebody that's struggling or listening to a child tell a story that's interested and wants to come to you and tell you something. You know, the best, most thing I look forward every Sunday when I come to church is, Jack, I'm going to call you out, Jack Stallo. Every Sunday you've got to bust my chops about how the Packers are going to lose and the Vikings are going to win. Sorry, Matt, sermon comes in a close second. Um, it could just be helping with decorating the church. December 1st, we're going to decorate the church. 
we'd love that some time you can come in and help and be part of the community. And for our time, you know, sign up for service, the help with the services. Sign up to be an usher. Sign up to be communion prep, communion distributor. Um, and I'm going to steal this from Matt again here. Sorry, you're coming into this quite a bit. Is all you have to do is show up, be here. We accept you for who you are, what you are. Nobody's going to judge you. We just want you to be part, as I'm going to say, not a community, but of a family. I view this as a family. A family so much that my son Tyler, unfortunately he's not here today, is willing to come to church. And if you can get a young male at the age of 20 to, to want to come to church, I think you're doing something right. One, one morning, one of our caretakers who takes care of my father-in-law so we can go about our daily business, and we were going to come to church smiling, I had to be here. He, the caretaker was running late and said, Tyler, could you stay and keep eye on Grandpa until they get here? And if you want, you can just stay home. He says, no, I'll meet you there. And he, sure enough, showed up. To my daughter, Josie, who was the shyest thing ever coming to church, would hide and didn't want to participate in anything to singing duets in front of everybody here to just this past Wednesday read in front of the whole congregation. She would have never done that a few years ago. So in closing, I urge you to take some time to think of how you can share your time, talents, and treasures with the rest of us. And take, you know, fill out that little yellow sheet that has been mailed to you. Please turn it back in. And I do have a event for everybody that wants to help. We do need to move tables and chairs from the activity room back to the kitchen, so anybody looking to kind of get in on the game right away, we'll see you after church. Thank you. Beautifully proclaimed. Thank you, Brad, other than the Packer bit, but... No judgment, right? No judgment. <clears throat> We're going to continue with uh, Holy Communion, this uh, sacred space, this sacred sacrament. And just a few reminders, uh, all are welcome. And uh, Jesus has invited all of humanity to break bread with the divine and with one another, and that's a beautiful thing to proclaim. Also, if you're a gluten-free person, there's a little white wafer in the bread dish. Please reach in and grab that. Also, there is grape juice in the wine tray. And hear these ancient and powerful words. Children of God, I would remind you, on the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord and Savior Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. He also taught us to pray our Lord's Prayer. Please join me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Again, all are welcome. I invite the assistant to come forward.
Now may the precious body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ strengthen and keep you in his grace now and evermore. Amen. Please stand as you are able and receive God's blessing. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May he look upon you with favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. People of hope, our mission is to grow in grace, grow in grace and go forth in service. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Please join us in our closing hymn soon and very soon. <laughs> Apparently it's taco Sunday, so uh, buy some tacos. Can I get an amen? Amen.